Today is Wednesday, February 26th. We've been sent some carpet fibers. We're closing on those. And so my initial test, certainly not my final test, was to take about 2.4 pounds of that uh, carpet fiber and I've added it to this drum. I'm going to get an agitator stir and uh, stir all that up and then try feeding it directly to the screw press. For that purpose I'm going to use this little CP4. I don't think it's going to work, but there's a chance. It's a pretty low consistency for a screw press, which is why I believe what we're going to have to do is use something like this. And this is a small, tiny, parabolic side heel screen. So, an inexpensive way of doing that is to uh, We'll mix up more of that mixture, probably in this large tub. Put it up on a forklift or a crane and gravity feed it there. The solids coming across the face will capture and run into another screw press. The liquid drop out and go wherever. But the uh, openings on that are 0 .020 inches, so 20,000, and I think that's going to be the most economical way to do it. Our screw presses have discharge controlled by air cylinders, this is one style, and basically the solids will press that open. Here's another style, you can also see that this press here, the KP6, which is the one that I will probably use. Let's set this down. Has a wedge wire screen or a perforated screen assembly on that versus the wedge wire I'm going to use on my initial run just to see where we're at with this stuff. Perforated screen assembly has a little bit larger hole and more open area wedge wire. In this case, again, this is 0.015 inches opening. So I'm going to get the mixer, mix that up, and then we'll go on with part two. Here. So we're back. Well, we've learned some stuff. One, it takes a lot of material. Here's what's left in our bucket. You can just pour it in, Brian. It won't hurt nothing. Pour. Yeah. Put about three buckets in. So I've been feeding it, and you see him now we're starting to first just now push the cone open. A very low back pressure, too. What I've learned is, you can hear that press, we need to go with a continuous flighted screw. More. Yeah, one more bucket, please. But you can see it pushes out here. This very first part is going to be, well, I was going to say wet, but I can't squeeze water out of it. Thank you, Brian. The first part uh, is typically a little moist, but uh, I can't squeeze water out of that. We'd have to do a moisture test to be sure. But if I open up this cone, Brian, will you hit that four-way valve right there? Allow this cone to open up. Go ahead, open it all the way. I mean, this is what the end of this step is looking like. And that's just slightly more damp than it was when I pulled it out of the box. So, I still believe that the answer is Initial pre-watering with that, change out our screw here, which is interrupted flighting, we're good, and uh, leave it open. Uh, run, run it through a continuous flighted screw about that size. Now that's our smallest model of the KP press, but 
we're going to get better results. And when I start talking about interrupted flight crew, you can see those three spots on the bar right there. There's one that's covered. Those are resistor teeth that go down to the screw shaft in between the interruptors and the flighting. There really isn't that need for that with this material. It's effective in uh, applications where we're grinding stuff up. So, I'm going to send this off to John and then we're going to talk.